Welcome to the Fun Astrology Podcast for Tuesday, January 24th. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thomas Miller on this end. And by the way, I mentioned yesterday at the end, we do have a fairly light week this week. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please go to the funastrology.com website. And up in the upper left, you will find an orange button that you can click and leave a voice message right from your phone. And you can do it completely anonymously. No email required. Just leave your message and we can answer them this week. Good week for it. And we had a couple from last week that I didn't get to because of all the things in the sky. We just didn't have room on the daily episodes last week. But I wanted to clean those up from this week. First of all, Julie, a longtime listener and supporter of this work, and in our Discord channel a lot, she mentioned wanting more information on houses. And Julie, I'm going to do that with Robert. I think that would be brilliant. And I've been thinking about that anyway. And since you requested it, we will start with the houses. And the reason is he is so well studied with that because I'll tell you where the the best information on the houses came from. And it's a book that's out out of print, but it's Mark Edmund Jones' book on horary astrology. Mark Edmund Jones is difficult to read in some places. You have to look at it. You have to think about it. You have to go over it again and again. And you also have to find the book because it is out of print. But it is a fantastic resource on specifically the houses. And he goes through them from a horary perspective. But if you just bought the book for the houses alone, you would not do a disservice to yourself. You could keep it for just that and not worry about the horary part. It's that good. But I'm going to run this by Robert, and I think he'll be more than happy to do this, and we'll start doing that on Old Soul, New Soul. So that's a great question. She asked, where could I find a book about the houses? That's it. Mark Edmund Jones on horary. And then study and highlight and take your phone and take pictures of all the pages on this the houses because it's fantastic material comprehensive and then our wonderful listener sophie up in boston left a message saying that when mercury turned direct that she got hit pretty hard the day before now let's think about that one because we've talked about that quite a bit why would somebody say that they felt more impacted by mercury retrograde events in her life the day before it turned direct Why would that happen? It's because in astrology, this is one to just lock into your brain. There are a couple of times when a planet's energy is more expressed. And this is something that you need to be aware of in even your own natal chart. You know, we're talking about transits here today, gone tomorrow. But in your natal chart, if you were born on the day before Mercury turned direct you have an embedded energy in this incarnation that you're going to play out, that's going to be with you your entire life. So it is worth noting where these different points are. And one of those is right before a planet stations to go retrograde. And I say station, when it's slowing down to a stop. You know, I sometimes like to not use astrological terminology here. When it is slowing down, getting ready to stop, and either go direct or it is coming out of retrograde, getting ready to go back in forward motion, those times the planet is probably at its peak strength. So regardless that it was coming in or out, Mercury was just being the trickster, and that energy was being felt and was affecting things around you. This is also when I think we can definitely use our own creation, reality creation, going back to Fred Dodson's work now, that we can use our own reality creation around that energy, and even to the point, if you guys, (laughs) here are a couple of really good books, and I saw this play out even over this weekend down here in St. Pete, where my friends Sean and Brielle both got sick, and we used these techniques that are expressed in Fred's book. If you wanted to get the one that probably is most impactive, that's new, it's on audio, you can listen to it really fast, it's not that long, put it on one and a half or times two even, and you could listen while you're driving, while you're doing something else, and you will get this information. The book is You Can Heal Anyone, and we used it this past weekend effectively. 
The other book is Clearing Entities. Some of those cross over, but I think we don't give entities enough credit of how often we are exposed to them and the trouble they can stir up. Talk about the trickster. That's kind of like the entities. But you use those kinds of techniques that are in those books to create around things like mercury picking on you, if you will, before it turns direct. It's, it's at full strength. The other thing is when we know that planets are in that position, we can also use them to our advantage because if you really wanted mercury kinds of characteristics in your life, like, for example, let's say that you had a book that you wanted to release. Well, just on the other side of the line of that Mercury retrograde, don't do it while it's in retrograde, but when it crosses out maybe two days later, still is fully engaged. Mercury is still very strong. Three days later, release the book. Now, the other two times that a planet gets amplified is when it crosses into a new sign. So when it's at 27, 28, 29. In fact, in horrorary, the technique is the last three degrees of the sign that it's coming from and the first three degrees of the sign that it's moving into, those are the transition degrees. So that's when it's more amplified. And then the other is, and depending on what chart house system you're using, it could be if it's whole sign, then that's going to be one and the same. But when it crosses into a new house, so if you're using equal, which I'm using all the time now, I've just gotten comfortable with it. Robert's right. It's, it's so accurate. You don't have to deal with the intercepted houses and but you know you might be using placidus when it changes houses that's also a time of amplified strength great question sophie great point she really didn't ask a question just made a point observation there and for all of us to remember that these things are can impact us and then also we can turn them around and use them to our advantage all right you guys have a great day oh what do we have today in the sky oh yeah let's talk about real quick the sun sextiles Jupiter tonight at 8.30. We kind of mentioned that yesterday. Sun sextiling Jupiter. That's playful. That's fun. That's powerful. Go create. Use everything we just talked about. Put that Aquarian energy that we discussed yesterday to good work and have some fun with Lord Jupiter. I love you and I will see you back tomorrow. Tomorrow.